Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. This will be part nine and should be the last video on the 1949 Dumont. We have three coats of polyurethane brushed on and now I'm going to wet sand, try to get as smooth a finish as we can get. And then we're going to use a spray on polyurethane. And I'll be wet sanding with this 800 grit paper foam sanding block and water. I want to make sure we keep the paper wet. that to keep it from getting built up on it and making scratches in the surface. This is really not that rough on the sides. Uh, yeah, you can feel some defects and dust and particles but not too bad. Tops, it's a little rougher in areas. And the front's pretty smooth, but around the trim, in these areas here, need some attention. And we'll get our paper out and we'll dip it down in the water, soak it really good. This is wet or dry paper. You wanna make sure you get that tight you get just standard old sandpaper, it'll come apart when you try to wet it. But this is like you'd use on a auto body when you paint a car or a truck. And just let the paper do the work. Don't want to put too much pressure on it. Let me do some sand in here for a few minutes, then I'll give you an update when I get more of it finished. All right, we well, got the top pretty smooth. And that white stuff you see, that's just the polyurethane. We sand it off. And with three coats, there's still plenty left on there. Yeah. Need to finish the front. So I just tipped it over, put the TV on its back. Just makes it a lot easier. Here's a spray I'm using. It's the same brand. That's probably a good idea. That's one coat of the spray. It's really looking good. I guess all of that wet sanding I did is paying off. Well, it's been two days since I finished up the polyurethane. So we're going to be putting the decals on today. And here's the decals I'll be putting on. These came from Radio Days. They're not the exact decals that I needed for this set. Uh, let me show you the difference here. On this Dumont, the first control is off on tone. And you can see we don't have an off on tone, but we do have an off on if we cut the volume part off. Then the second slot is volume, that's where we'll use that. And then we got a focus and a selector, brightness and contrast. So we'll just cut the volume part off of the off on, put it here volume will be second. We won't have a tone indicator but that's the best we can do with these decals. And there's our completed decals. This bezel just fits in like that. And then if you remember it had those tabs in the back that just bend over. 
same vein on this one. And the speaker grill, still in good shape. Pretty amazing, the original grill cloth. All right, we have the cabinet in the basement shop. I uh, thought it'd be a lot easier to reassemble than it would down in the in the garage. This thing is so heavy when we get it all put together. We want to get as close to the house as possible, so it'd be less less distance to have to carry. Here's a new feet that I'm going to put on the bottom of the TV. I'm hoping these are sturdy enough. They seem to be. Uh, we'll see. It's a heavy heavy set, but. We're going to go with these. All right, hopefully that'll support the TV. I like the felt on the very bottom. Let's put the speaker back in. All right, glass is in. Picture tube in, and we got it fastened down. There's a couple of bolts. You can see one right there, one on each side that tightens it up on that track. Well, we got the chassis in. Rita had to help me. This thing is a beast. Got the speaker plugged in, got the tuning eye put in its position. So let's turn it on and see what we get. Uh, this is the antenna wire. I have the blonder tongue modulator and it's just picking that up through the air. So here we go. Communicating that block back, but it was fun sitting by the yesterday. We knew it 20 years ago. Ooh, looks pretty good. And one last thing I've done on the chassis was on this horizontal oscillator adjustment. Uh, rather than have to contend with putting this alignment tool or screwdriver to adjust it, just made this extension. There's actually a screwdriver slot on the inside that fit onto the adjuster. And then piece of plastic to fill in the gap and then some heat shrink to finish it off so that way we can adjust the horizontal a lot easier these knobs will need some felt behind them so they won't rub against the finish of the cabinet and I'm going to make my own uh, this is just some brown felt thicker than the typical knob felt that you can buy but that's okay that just give it more protection and here's three I've already finished and the advantage to cutting your own you can kind of shape the center of it so it's got a square top so I was able to shape that to where it fits a little better. Your typical felt just got a round hole punched in it. It would work but I think this will work a little better. So I'm going to cut the rest of these out and the way I'm doing that I'm just holding the knob against the felt while I cut it and I'm following the knob with my scissors and then I'll show you how I cut the center out. There's a general shape and I will go back and straighten it up make it look a little more round and just doing that by eye 
Now we'll cut the center hole. Pretty simple. I just fold it. And I'll make a cut about the same distance from each edge. Like that. And we open it up. Pretty good. There's all our felt laying on the back of the knobs. Thought I'd go ahead and clean the back of these knobs, get rid of some of that white oxidation or whatever it's called. And then once I get them cleaned out, I'm just going to shoot a little bit of clear and maybe that'll keep it from coming back. I'm just using mineral spirits and Q-tips. Front with the knobs on. The back on this set really looks good. Very little surface rust. Just mainly around the screw holes is where the rust is. Just some dirt down in there. Looking over this back after I cleaned it. The finish was kind of dull, and rather than repaint, put a coat of clear polyurethane, just a satin finish, so that'll just brighten it up a little. And I think that'll work. And we'll need some screws for the back, as there was only, I think it was three, maybe four, that was holding the back on and we need nine so I'm going to use these quarter inch head screws and I'm going to paint the heads of the screws black and that's one coat we'll let that dry and we'll go back and put a second coat well we're back on the bench we had all the chassis in set was working fine and we lost sound no sound whatsoever and the bad part is we had it upstairs we had it up in the living room where the set's going to stay so I had to take everything back out of the cabinet it's easier to carry like that you can carry a three separate pieces and we had a bad tube and the filaments are open on this tube 6AT8 it's a audio driver so I think once again I'm going to go through and we'll pull each tube out and test them one more time and if I have a new replacement, I'm going to put it in because I don't want to have to go through this again having to lug this thing back to the basement to do troubleshooting. And, you know, I, I could have probably found a bad tube upstairs, but it's just hard to work on it with it in the cabinet. and You're fumbling around trying to figure out what's going on. So I've decided I'm going to leave this in the basement all day today and I'm going to leave it on. Let it get real good and hot. And make sure everything's working before we lug it all back upstairs. The Honeymooners with the stars Art Carney. Okay, we had the Dumont up in the living room and have it on this base here and got a couple of other old TVs on the bottom. Got a Halicrafters and an Emerson seven inchers. Wanted to show you the, the back of the TV, how it turned out. 
and you can see we're using rabbit ears. I've got a blonder tongue modulator in the basement that transmits on channel 5 and picking it up with those rabbit ears. There's the back all fastened down. And there's our antenna input. This has a phono input for the antenna. It's got an adapter over to a bow on there. There's a horizontal hole control and that extension that we put on it. Well, that concludes the restoration of the 1949 Dumont. I uh, hope you enjoyed this series of videos. I've enjoyed restoring this set. It works well. The cabinets looks nice. So, thanks for watching. See you next time. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. And we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.